Okay. Oh, we're out for a change. Uh, thank you. Um, before we start tonight's meeting, I would just like to announce that uh, Dave Whelan will be retiring in April. Uh, so if you are watching out there on Zoom, have a good one. Uh, and the other one is uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Joe Hindle Taylor on throwing herself out of a plane while raising money for St. Catherine's Hospice. Well done. Uh, and she is still accepting money uh, if anyone wants to throw it her way. So uh, I'll start the meeting as ever with some domestic arrangements for the meeting uh, due to the regulations surrounding voting. Only those members physically present are able to vote. Mobile devices, please ensure that all electronic equipment is either on silent mode or switched off. There are no planned flat fire alarms, so if it does sound, please leave via the emergency exits. The meeting is being live streamed during open session for members of the public to watch. If you would like to speak, Please press your microphone to let me know. When I invite you to speak, your microphone will turn red. Please do not obstruct your mouth to ensure that anyone lip reading can do so. If anyone is having an issue, please let Democratic Services know. Some points on procedure for members. Members asking a question have a maximum of three minutes and may ask one supplementary question directly related to the original question for not more than two minutes. When speaking on an item, all members must address the issue under debate. No speeches may exceed five minutes without the consent of the mayor. A member who has spoken once on a motion may not speak again while it is being de debated, except in specific circumstances. Also, individual members of the public will be restricted to speaking for a total of five minutes during the whole meeting. Okay. Item one, apologies for absence. Are there any apologies? There are, Mr Mayor, uh, from Councillor Bretherton, Councillor Rea, Councillor Hunter, Councillor Forshaw, Councillor Flannery and Councillor Campbell. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Members are reminded of their responsibility to declare any pecuniary interest in respect of matters contained in this agenda. Are there any declarations of interest? Councillor Green. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Can I declare a personal non-pecuniary interest for, for clarity only um, as a county councillor and cabinet member at Lancashire County Council, with particular reference to items 5, 10 and 11? Thank you. Thank you. OK, item three. Minutes of the last meeting. This is for the minutes of the meeting held on Wednesday, 28th of February, and it's for decision. Can I please ask the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster, to propose the minutes be approved? Proposed, Mayor. Thank you. Is this seconded? Seconded. OK. Are there any questions on points of accuracy? Yeah, it's all right. Councillor Will King. Oh. <laughs> okay, Councillor Rainford, have we swapped microphones? That, that will make it a lot easier this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> Councillor Rainford. 
Yeah, just one point, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I'm down on the minutes as uh, apologies. I did actually phone me apologies. However, I did manage to uh, get online on Teams, so I did actually attend virtually. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Ange Turner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, it would appear that uh, the question that I asked the Cabinet Member for planning has been omitted from the minutes. Okay. That will be looked into, thank you. Uh, if there are no other questions um, on points of accuracy, then we go straight to the vote for, against or abstain. Once your buttons come on, can you please press correctly? Thank you. That's clearly carried. Thank you very much. Uh, we now come on to the ever exciting and well worth listening to Mayor's announcements. Um, can I start by thanking everyone who attended the Murder Mystery Night at Worden Hall on the 8th of March? It was a really good evening. I still don't know who did it or why, but it was good. They tried to explain it, but I gave up. Uh, since the last council meeting, I've attended various engagements right across the borough. Some highlights include the opening of the Leyland St. Mary School Library. Judging the school primary dance competition, the Dementia Alliance visits and launch of the new charter, No Whispers birthday event, that was really good. Uh, the opening of the Gregson Lane Community Centre, uh, the Central Village Hub, thank you, that was also excellent. And uh, last night we opened the Optigra Eye Clinic in Bamba Bridge, which is for sole use of the National Health Service. Right, thanks for that. Uh, moving on to item five, this item is for Norton. Can I please ask the Leader of the Council, Councillor Paul Foster, to present the report on urgent decisions? I will, I will, Mayor. Do you want me to hold on a second? Because it looks like the IT system may have just failed. Right. Do you want me to carry on? Yeah, OK. Thanks, Mayor. As uh, our colleagues are all aware, we report to Cabinet uh, any de urgent decisions that are made outside, sorry, to Council, any urgent decisions that are made outside of meetings. There was, as you see on agenda page 25, there were three decisions that were needed to be made. The first one was in February, and it was the Cabinet Member for Communities, Leisure and Wellbeing. And this was under the general exception rule, as we needed to commence a consultation with staff within agreed timeframes. The other two urgent decisions on there um, in uh, earlier this month, both, uh, both, both, sorry, Mayor, are to do with the HAF, the Holiday Activity Programme. Members will all be aware we received these funding grants very late. They come late from governments to the, to the upper tier authority. And so urgent decisions were made to accept that grant. Otherwise, we would have lost it. Thank you, Mayor. OK. Uh, is this seconded? Seconded. Thank you. Are there any questions from any members of the council? Nothing coming through. Okay. That, 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 just, yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, okay, so we now move to the vote. We are having problems with the electronics. Uh, so on this, I'm just going to ask for uh, a show of hands of whether we accept it. Is that correct? Yeah, so if you will just raise your hand to accept it. Is there any other way you want? If, 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 sorry? The, the, the noting, yeah, okay. That's, <laughs> don't, don't worry, don't worry. No, uh, it's not. Okay, so they've been noted. Right, so we now move on to... 
Uh, item six, cabinet. Again, this item is for noting, so we don't need to vote. <laughs> uh, can I please ask the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster, to present his report uh, of the cabinet meeting held on the 13th of March? Thanks, man. I think no better example of the final agenda item tonight, colleague, of why we need to get on with it. Um, thanks, Mayor. There was a meeting of the Cabinet held on the on Wednesday, the 13th of March, a relatively short meeting, where the Cabinet, uh, I presented the quarter three performance monitoring report to Cabinet. Um, we debated a few issues, but fundamentally, Mayor, the Council's performance continues to be strong. There was then... Um, the food waste collections paper that came forward and again just to highlight to members the that didn't um, participate in the cabinet meeting the current government is legislating for food waste collections in approximately two years time and therefore what the only decision that cabinet made at this point was that we were going to start looking at the procurement of the caddies and the additional vehicles that may be required mayor and also within that paper Councillor Bielinski Gelder did um, detail how we were then looking later on in the year to start a very detailed consultation with the um, with the local community on how this, if it's implemented, would impact and change any uh, waste collections that we have. Willing to take any questions anyone may have. Thank you. Well, yeah, I take it seconded. Seconded. Okay, then. Uh, do we have any questions from any members of the council? Um, Councillor Carol Moulton. It's about the food waste collections, and it's noted that £861,000 has been provided for the government from the government. Uh, surely this is just part of phase one for the uh, capital budget for the equipment that's necessary. Are we expecting an amount... Um, from the government uh, to undertake the actual revenue um, budget for collecting uh, an ongoing cost for collecting the waste. Yeah, thanks, uh, Councillor Walton. The, this was debated at quite a bit of length at the meeting of the Cabinet and it was discussed. So there's three tranches of funding. The funding that's been allocated to date is purely for capital spend. And Cabinet did discuss our concerns that it's not enough to procure the items that we need. And then as the um, policy is developed over the next two years, then the impact on the revenue budget will be much clearer. And then from them, the government will then be looking to provide additional funding um, as required to ensure that the, the, the collections take place. I would point out, though, as, as you've raised it, Councillor Walton, that this is current government policy. And the, there is, with the general election this year, there is always the possibility that either the current government or any new government may change this policy. And so, hence why we are just looking to start the procurement of the, um, of the, of the caddies and the vehicles, as, as it was discussed. And clearly, later on in the year, when we understand the formation of the new government and what the new government's priorities are, will then determine whether we start spending any further monies in ch looking to, to change the waste collection. But it's two years off, we do have a little bit of time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I seem to have no more questions, so can we please note the item? Thank you. Uh, item eight, changes to committee membership. This is Rewinding. <laughs> Scrutiny Committee, this item is for noting. Please can I ask the Chair of Corporate Performance and Budget Scrutiny Committee, Councillor Will Adams, to present the report to committee held on the 11th of March. Thank you, Chair. I can't believe you forgot about us, to be honest. But anyway, uh, yeah, happy to propose the recommendations and take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Is this seconded? Mr Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions from any members of the council? I've got Councillor David Howarth. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, 
the wonderful councillor Jane Bell some time ago uh, mentioned that we don't have a cultural strategy in this council and so uh, the scrutiny committee is has set up a working group to investigate that and you should all have had in your pigeonholes or whatever we call them these days uh, a questionnaire and I could if I could just ask the chairman if he would um, urge all members of the council to take that and fill it in and return it and I'm sure the answer will be yes. There we go, Councillor Will Adams. Uh, absolutely, I would urge all members to take part in this. It's uh, something which would be great benefit to this council uh, and our borough. So I would urge you all to do that. Otherwise, uh, Council House will be knocking on your door, I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we do now move on to item eight, changes to committee membership. Uh, this item is for a decision. Can I please ask the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster, to present the report? Uh, thanks, uh, Mayor. Can everyone hear me okay? Because I, I, there's, a, there's a, certainly a slight problem with the volume here. Is that better? We can hear you on Teams, Paul. Right, okay. Thank you. I'll speak up. I'll speak up. But for the first, for the first time in my political life, I struggle to hear David Howarth there, which is, <laughs> which is a first. Um, as I say, right, so following, members will recall that we... Uh, made slight changes to the, the cabinet um, and consequentially there are some changes to committees that need to be made. We were looking to make these originally at the business meeting of the council mayor um, um, in May um, but because of what's happened we, we, we constitutionally need to make some changes. So if I may go through them because I do apologise to members, there's one or two slight amendments um, and I apologise for that because um, there's a slight oversight and I'll take responsibility this from this myself in that the mayor is still the mayor so can't run the planning committee but I'll go through that now. So the governance committee mayor we're going to remove councillor Sharples um, and replace him with councillor Deborah Ashton and we're going to appoint councillor Wesley Roberts as the chair and councillor Ashton as the vice chair. On the planning committee we're removing councillor Sharples again but the substitute now will be Councillor Keith Martin, not yourself, Mayor, because you are the Mayor. The Standards Committee, we're removing again Councillor Colin Sharples and replacing Colin with uh, Councillor Keith Martin again. Never ask anyone for, to be a volunteer because you get volunteer for everything. And then on the outside bodies, due to the fact that Councillor Watkinson is now in responsibilities that, that Councillor Fannery formerly had, he goes on to the Leyland Town Deal Board and the Central Lancashire Strategic Planning Joint Advisory Committee. Uh, and then two more things. There's obviously the, it's discussed there at paragraph 11. Counsel, Councillor Matthew uh, Forshaw was uh, a former member of the Conservative group and is now independent. However, when the officers have looked at political proportionality, there are slight changes. So it's the proposals that uh, Councillor Forshaw stays on the uh, committee as an independent and I just want to remind all colleagues here that this is where I believe that the Local Government Act is wrong because I believe every single councillor should always have an opportunity to sit on a committee of the council. We're all elected, we're all equal. However, if you're not a member of a political group, of which that means there must be a minimum of two of you and to form a group, actually um, you have no legal rights under the Local Government Act to sit on a committee. And you'll all recall that in the last administration, when there was independence as well, we also ensured that there, all those individuals got the opportunity to sit on the committee by working in, within the regulations. Um, Councillor Matthew Farnworth as well is now, I can announce as this is one of the amendments, is going to be the chair of the Leyland Community Hub as well. And then I think the Conservative group then have asked that Councillor Damien Bretherton replace Councillor Matthew Forshaw as a substitute in the Corporate Performance and Budget Scrutiny Committee. So I'd like uh, my honour to propose those changes. Thank you. Thank you. Is this seconded? Seconded. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions from members of the Council? Uh, there's nothing floating in uh, with that. Uh, so we're at the end of this discussion. Please, can we note the report? Thank you. 
it does say that, and then I, I read down there. So, I, yeah, yeah, that's... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mr. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. We're now moving to the vote uh, on that. No vote here. But there you go. Um, so, we haven't got that. Can we do it by a show of hands, please? A raising of hands. That's clearly carried. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Right. So this is a, a voting item, and I, I, I say so here. This is uh, the amendment standing orders. I am right there, aren't I? Yes. Uh, Questions to council. This item is for decision. Can I please ask the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster, to present the report? Thanks, man. I don't know if you've been at a function today, have you? <laughs> You're just in a very good mood. I do apologise. I am going off here, but there you go. So um, I'm just going to read out, Mayor, to start with the um, reasons for the recommendations as published in the report from the monitoring officer. And this is the first one, the existing standing orders permit significant rights to members to ask questions without notice. This limits the effectiveness and benefit of questions, often meaning that they cannot be answered immediately. The next point, we go on further, the existing standing orders contain no real time limitations, with significant meeting time being spent on this agenda item. This can be to the detriment of the consideration of other reports being presented for consideration and debate. The proposed amendments will focus questions on business before council, which has been evidenced by reports and or matters of borough importance. And the requirement to place questions in writing seeks to ensure that a detailed response can be given quickly. So the, it has been a concern of ours for some considerable time about the amount of time that members have been asked here to sit here in meetings and um, with the questions that are being asked there's an awful lot of replication as well Mayor. So every single member of the council at any time can come and ask questions of the cabinet at the meeting of the cabinet. At any time Mayor, the, any member of this council can come to the corporate performance scrutiny committee and ask questions of myself on any corporate performance issues, Councillor Tomlinson in respect to finance or any other members of the cabinet in respect to their individual portfolios when they are on that agenda. What's happening is questions are being asked at times at every meet, the same question at every meeting. All members also have the opportunity to take part fully in any debate on any agenda item that is before the council as well at any time. This is purely around the asking of questions on the night to colleagues and I. At times, and I think the last council, two, the last two council meetings have been prime examples, we've spent approximately 40 minutes plus answering questions here at the beginning of the agenda, which then meant we've left here after nine o'clock at night, where members, certain members are certainly fatigued and feeling tired and important business, I feel, is being rushed there. What we're asking here is that members can still ask questions in council. We're just asking that members put those questions in writing prior to the meeting of the council and then an answer can be provided at the meeting. Furthermore, some of the questions that are being asked in council should actually be directed elsewhere. So I think it was the leader of the opposition herself was raising, concern, raising concerns of health and safety, for example. Those questions shouldn't be sat here for a cabinet member to answer. They should be raised immediately outside of the meeting cycle with either the cabinet member or the appropriate officer. So we've considered this long and hard 
we think this is a more efficient way of using council time. It still allows all members to ask questions at any time. And as when I started, Mayor, there are meetings, public meetings of the Cabinet, where we can be challenged, rightly so. There are public meetings of the Scrutiny Committee, where we are already challenged, rightly so. And there's then the opportunity for all members at any point to raise any queries within individual agenda items elsewhere on the agenda. This will make us more efficient, a better, a more efficient use of time, and it will permit for better, more detailed answers to be provided, Mayor, at the meeting of the Council when the question is raised in writing. I therefore make these proposals to Council. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is this seconded? Seconded. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I've just had it confirmed that while we can't see the screens, the public can still see us and we are still being uh, on the web out there. Anyway, moving on. Um, are there any questions from members of the council? Please. Uh, standing order 24.2. Uh, this is a proposal to amend the standing orders of the Council. Standing Order 24.2 sets out the word proposal to amend the Constitution is made um, by report, except where it's made by report from the Governance Committee. Any motion to amend, vary or revoke the procedural rules will, once proposed and seconded, stand adjourned without discussion to the next ordinary meeting and the Council to await a report from the Monitoring Officer or the Governance Committee. So there should be no further debate on this item this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, from the monitoring officer. Right, okay. Um, right, on the point of order raised by uh, Councillor Green, he's correctly cited um, the standing orders at 24-2 um, in particular. Um, it is open for councillors to apply to suspend the operation of standing orders if they choose to do so. It will require a vote. But it... But it well, with respect, Councillor Howarth, um, in the Constitution, you have had a point of order raised about the application of the standing orders. It also includes in standing orders the right to suspend standing orders. So I'm just referring you to what the Constitution says. Um, so it would be open for members to move that, should they wish. Um, I... Okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, so, if if you were asked my opinion on the operation of that rule, 
the strict interpretation is correct as put forward. I do feel that that is more to do with significant changes to the constitution. I, well, with respect, that's up to members to decide whether they feel it's a, um, a, substantive change, a substantial change or not. Um, there's still a provision for um, questions to members within the proposal. It's just re rehashing that proposal. I, it's up to you guys, really. Yeah. Another point. Yeah, point of order, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just further to uh, what Councillor Green has said, and um, looking again at uh, the standing orders of uh, the the Governance Committee, um, and in fact, on uh, if I can just find it on the the function of the Governance Committee, one of the functions of the committee, is to take an overview of the Council's constitution um, and assist the monitoring officer, assist the monitoring officer in reviewing the constitution to ensure that the current uh, meets the purposes of Article 1. So it is up to the constitution to go to the Constitution Committee Uh, please feel free. Yeah, um, that's within the terms of reference of the Governance Committee. Um, but again, it refers to assisting the monitoring officer. Ultimately, the constitution is owned by the people in this in this room. Um, any report would come to you for decision and consideration. My point is, if you were minded to say this is not a complicated um, change to the constitution, it would be open for you to to suspend standing orders. And make that decision on the night if you if it is the feeling that this is a significant change to the constitution then it can be referred back to governance committee for consideration but i would have to stress as i have said before the chamber before um we end up having the same debate three or four times including on the night at um council where changes proposed by governance committee are argued against by members of governance committee and it seems a bit of a nonsense for that to arise so it it's entirely the constitution is owned by you as councillors i'm happy with that and that is that what the constitution says but it is open for the constitution to be changed by this by you as councillors and that's the point is this a point of another point of order okay point of order I appreciate that. I'd just like to remind the monitoring officer that it was probably, I don't know, about 18 months ago. Um, we uh, in the Liberal Democrat group wanted to pro propose an amendment to the constitution be, uh, regarding ward councillors calling in planning applications. And we were instructed by you at the time that any amendments to the constitution would have to go through the governance uh, committee. I'm standing here now and I really feel that the integrity of this council is sliding into an abyss and it's really disappointing to hear one thing when it suits one set of in uh, issue issues or councillors and one thing when it suits another. It's changing all the time. You do recall that of course. Okay, I've got two people waiting to speak. I've got Councillor David Howarth and then Councillor Paul Foster. Councillor Howarth. Well, I'd indicated to speak if, that actually, if this actually went to debate, but I think we're still waiting for a ruling as to whether it should be going back to the Governance Committee. Which... Uh, thank you, Councillor Howarth. Uh, Councillor Paul Foster. Thanks. Um, Council needs to be aware that the Governance Committee isn't a decision-making body. 
the governance committee this council is the ultimate governance committee because we are the decision making body i do not believe uh mayor that asking members to write questions prior to rather than sorry verbally asking the questions at a meeting is a fundamental change i would argue if we were stopping questions that would be a different matter but we're not mr mayor we're trying to improve the function of this council any recommendations that any governance committee put forward are just that recommendations this council there can then decide whether we adopt those recommendations amend those recommendations or vote down those recommendations i mr mayor respectfully request and propose that we therefore suspend the relevant standing orders and we take this debate and vote this evening thank you please be patient Uh, we're just going to suspend the meeting for two minutes to scrutinise.
Right, folks, councillors, on the point of order, it's been acknowledged that I believe that it needs to go back to governance. Can I bring in councillor Paul Foster? So, thanks, Mayor. It's the, I've spoken with the monitoring officer and I'm clearly uh, disappointed that councillor Green didn't find it appropriate to write to the monitoring officer prior because if he's got such, rather than waste time here, we could have dealt with this yesterday or the day before and actually taken a decision and giving you a written response as to whether or not the point of order you were raising was appropriate. However, that's how you do business. We could, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm speaking. Right, there's only one person speaking at a time, okay, and you come through this office here. We could, mate, Mr Mayor, when we ask the Governance Committee to look at this, just stop questions like they're doing LCC, Councillor uh, Wesley, couldn't we? But never mind, we're not like that. So, I'm not absolutely satisfied that the Constitution is clear on this, Mayor. And I'm not absolutely satisfied with the point of orders that has been raised. However, what I will not have is the integrity of the monitoring officer being questioned in public by certain individuals. And therefore, it's my proposal that we send this um, now to a, me a meeting of the Governance Committee to meet in the next two weeks, please, so that a report can come back to the next council meeting and a decision can be made. Furthermore, uh, Mayor, I'm going to officially ask that the Governance Committee, in conjunction with the monitoring officer, look at this specific standing order, which clearly is a, of is a grey area, and comes back with firm proposals on how it should be worded. Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Is this seconded? Seconded. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have Councillor Mac Michael Green. Please. You, you, you've now switched off. Yeah. OK, I have been informed that we will now just move on. It will be referred back to the Governance Committee. Um, there is no f need for further speakers on this item. I haven't invited... No, I, th I think we're moving on. We've, we, we've spent a lot of time on this now. I would like us to move on. Yes, uh, the leader did make reference. I will allow you a response. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I won't prolong uh, proceedings much further, but I just wanted to uh, point out to the leader who clearly doesn't know what the Constitution says, that it's at the point where the proposal is proposed, as it was by yourself, Councillor Foster, and then seconded by your Deputy Leader, Councillor Bolinski gelder At that point, the debate stands adjourned. That's why this could not be raised in advance. It had to be raised at that time, once it was proposed and seconded, which I did in accordance with the Constitution. I would have expected the Mayor to have stopped the debate then and said it was adjourned to a further meeting. When it wasn't, that's why I had to clarify. And just for the point of clarification, there was absolutely no criticism of the monitoring officer. I, I have respect for the role that Mr Moyster plays in this council. But from time to time, we've got to look at the rules and we've got to make sure that we abide by those rules. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you, uh, Councillor Green. Right, I am moving on. Uh, item 10, I've been advised that since the agenda publication, this report now needs to be considered as an exempt item. We will therefore hear this report as the last item on the agenda this evening in private session. Item 11, bikeability contract approval. This item is for decision. Can I please ask the leader of the council, Councillor Paul Foster, to present the report? Thanks, Mayor. Um, relatively straightforward. It's a continuance of the existing scheme, colleagues, to deliver the bikeability programme which is basically, as it says within reports, 80% of children in year groups five or six are offered bikeability level one and two courses every year. We've been successful, we've been very successful in the delivery and rollout of this over a number of years now, and it brings huge benefits to our young kids when they're learning how to ride their bikes, particularly on the highways. Um, it was secured via a £71,000 grant, and I'm happy to propose that we accept the um, proposals. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Is this seconded? Seconded. Okay. Are there any questions from members of the council? Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, just to say that we'll be supporting this. We um, think I, I have personal knowledge of uh, this bikeability and we look forward to seeing the children riding their bikes safely on the highways in the future. It's a very good scheme. Thank you. Thank you. I've got no other members wishing to speak. Are there any questions for from members of the public? I can't see any members of the public in today. So we're at the end of the debate on this proposal. Uh, we now move to the vote. Um, show of hands. OK, we think it's uncontentious. So can I have a show of hands for... Um, I would say that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Item 12, uh, Parks and Open Spaces uh, Capital Programme. This item is for a decision. Can I please ask the Cabinet Member for Finance, Assets and Public Protection Councillor Matthew Tomlinson to present the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I hope that this will bring the whole council together um, in rejoicing um, about the activities that the council carries out. Um, you'll be aware that there's a, a range of ways we bring programmes forward. Quite often in the budget, once a year, we bring a range of projects uh, to council to be voted on, but also during the year, we bring uh, a whole range of projects forward. What I'm trying to do with this report is set out um, a whole range of projects up for the next three years and actually identify where the money's coming from so a bit of transparency and openness um, for everybody uh, to see and to approve um, in one go rather than coming forward in dribs and drabs. Um, can I give members reassurance this is not an exhaustive list so if you've been campaigning for something in your patch and it's not on this list, it doesn't mean to say that that's not going to happen. Um, and obviously things we've already agreed in the budget, um, like Tidy Gate, New Longton, Longton, they're, they will carry on. But this is in addition to what we've already agreed. Um, I hope it gives people some certainty. Um, I know that certainly the Conservatives will be pleased to see there's some drainage of football pitches on here, um, which they did raise recently, even though I knew it was going to happen anyway I didn't let them know at the time but I knew you'd be so delighted um, so I'm pleased that it's come forward well if you think this report has been written since the budget meeting you've forgotten how, how what it's like to run a council um, but it has been a while hasn't it um, <laughs> but so it, no sorry I, I, I wanted to bring everyone together I apologise I apologise Mayor Culper um, I want to bring everyone together this is good news stuff and it's uh, a sign of our ongoing commitment to invest in our green spaces um, and parks and playgrounds and I'm happy to move the report Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you. Is this seconded? Okay, thank you. Councillor Foster. Right, 
Okay, are there any questions from any members of the council? And I have Councillor David Howarth. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, despite the fact that big chunks of money are being taken out of Harrican Priory, um, there is a very good reason for that. And it's most unfortunate that we weren't able to complete the um, how it green links, mainly because there is one part of the loop that we couldn't secure because the landowner was not prepared to allow um, cycling of bridle way uh, to be added to the existing public right of way. And that's very unfortunate. But I'm pleased to see that that money can be reallocated to providing a different cycle loop, which certainly the uh, Pemmingham Community Hub has supported. Um, and we can get people out, hopefully doing more active travel. Um, I also see there's a big chunk going to Margaret Road as well. Uh, and I suspect there's a very good reason for that, because Margaret Road is probably one of the most dilapidated uh, play areas we've got. And probably one of the few that doesn't have any enclosed fencing around it. So I suspect that uh, the cost of that is probably going to be quite substantial. So while it is regrettable that we couldn't um, achieve the uh, how it green links um, through no fault of anybody here, uh, it is good to see that that money has been well reallocated elsewhere. And we still have £100,000 uh, to complete as much of the path along the river as we can on our council-owned land. Thank you, Councillor Howarth. Um, Ah, Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you, Mr. Very, very quick there. <laughs> yeah, thank, uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Tomlinson, for reminding us that we did um, bring up the uh, football pitches and uh, and the uh, Central Parks area um, that really need some money spending on it. Uh, and so we, we I welcome this report and thank you for thinking of us. Thank you. <laughs> OK, I've no one else on my screen, so I'm going to move to questions from the public. I don't think we have any public in tonight, but I am meant to ask that. Um, so th there is no one there. So we're at the end of the debate on this proposal. Uh, again, I think we can use a show of hands here. Um, so if you will raise your hand if you agree with the proposal. Uh, again, I absolutely carried. Thank you very much. Item 13, Statement of Community Involvement. This is for decision. Can I please ask the Cabinet Member for Planning, Business and Support and Economic Development, Councillor Ian Watkinson, to present the report? Yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. So, Statement of Community Involvement sets out how the Local Planning Authority will consult and notify the community, businesses and other organisations or stakeholders about the development of the area. It also explains how people can get involved with the planning process. Uh, the council is required to publish a, a statement of community involvement and review it every five years. So the council produced a draft statement of community involvement, I'll say STI from now on, in autumn 2023, and it was agreed by council on 22nd of November 23 that the draft be the subject of public consultation for a period of six weeks. Consultation was carried out between 2nd of January and 13th of February 2024. There were 27 respondents to the consultation, making a variety of points. A summary of the consultation responses is provided in Appendix 2 in the pack before members. Uh, following analysis of the responses, various amendments have been made to the Statement of Community Involvement, the SCI. Uh, the SCI complies with the relative legislative requirements and will ensure opportunities for communities and other interested parties to engage throughout the planning process. Consultation methods seek to ensure that opportunities are maximised to enable participation from a wide range of stakeholders. It's therefore recommended that the SCI be approved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. Uh, is this seconded? Yeah, happy to second. And I want to thank uh, Councillor Watkinson and the team because if you haven't already, do please do note. I think it's Appendix Two. It's uh, gender. Uh, sorry, page 87 onwards within the pack, because not only has the council published all the consultation responses, we've all, every one, we've also 
given a reason why it's either been accepted or why it couldn't be accepted, the proposals that are going forward. And that really does give value to a consultation because an individual or organisation can say they've been listened to and this is why we are going to take on board your, your, your proposals or your comments or why not. And there are a number of key stakeholders and organisations within Lancashire that could learn from that because you can't then just publish little bits of consultations with the bits that suit, if you get what I mean. This is everything. It's all there. So I thank you for that, Councillor Watkinson and the officers, and I'm happy to second the proposals. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Foster. Uh, are there any questions from members of the Council? Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, we welcome the, re the revised statement of community involvement, which hasn't been updated since 2002. 2013 and as you said councillor foster we were pleased that some of the comments uh, received in the consultation report have been included in the statement it was very interesting reading the comments and i'm very pleased that they've been helped to influence the new um community statement mm. thank you uh thank you councillor walton we have no more requests to speak so again i ask any members of the public I don't think we have any in, but I will still ask the question. No. In that case, we're at the end of the debate on the proposal. Uh, can I again ask for a show of hands? All those four, please raise. Okay, definitely carried. Again, thank you very much indeed. Uh, we now move on to... Uh, item 14, update to the local development scheme. This item is for decision. Please can I ask the Cabinet Member for Planning, Business, and Support and Economic Development, Councillor Ian Watkinson, to present this report. Yeah, thanks again, Mr Mayor. Another one for me to read out. So, the local development scheme, LDS. Uh, the Council is required to publish a local development scheme which outlines the timetable for local plan making and review. So, this isn't, this isn't the local plan. Uh, the current LDS is out of date and to meet national planning policy, an update must be adopted. The report in the papers explains why the timetable has slipped since the current LDS was adopted and covers the period between January 24 and December 26. Uh, in autumn 23, a government consultation on plan making reforms confirmed the government's intention that the latest date for plan makers to submit local plans under the current system will be 30th of June 2025, with adoption by 31st of December 2026. The, the Central Lancashire Authorities of South Ribble, Chorley and Preston are committed to meeting these deadlines as submission under a revised plan making regime would have significant impacts on the scope and content of the local plan currently being prepared. So to meet the proposed submission deadlines and adoption, a part two preferred options consultation will not take place. Attention is instead focused on preparing the pre-submission local plan, Regulation 90. Uh, this version will provide a full draft plan to be consulted on, both in person and online. Uh, the pre-submission local plan will still provide an opportunity for individuals, communities and stakeholders to express their views and further engage in the plan making process. Uh, it's therefore recommended that the revised LDS be adopted and be approved for publication. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Well, concern is this seconded? Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions from members of the Council? Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, we welcome this report. Um, it brings, it provides members with up-to-date information concerning the progress of the local development plan with key dates and uh, consultation arrangements going forward. Thank you. Uh, I have no one else uh, asking to speak. We have no members of the public in wanting to ask questions, so we can move straight to the vote. Uh, again, I would ask for raised hands. All those in favour of, please raise your hands now. Clearly carried. Thank you very much. Okay, we now move on to questions to the Leader of the Council. Are there any questions from any members of the Council? 
Now, to start with, we do have a written question has been received in advance from Councillor Emma Smith. Would you like to read your question out? I do. What did I say? Sorry. I do apologise. I do apologise, Emma. Flipping heck. What a mess. Anyway, there we go. Emma. <laughs> It is Councillor Stevens indeed making this question. Um, I would like to ask the leader a question about the idea of creating a misogyny working group at our council. Misogyny, as defined by Oxford languages, is the dislike of contempt for or ingrained prejudice against women. Some of the things I would view as misogynistic include being told to smile or cheer up, when all the men around are women are allowed to look miserable, views that women can never be funnier than men, or some of society's view that sexual assaults can be excused if the woman was wearing a skirt or dress and was under the influence of alcohol. Whilst women should never all be counted under one homogenous group, considering our differing opinions, morals and lived experience, I do believe it would be pertinent to put together this working group to give us a chance to explore what, whether it be big or small, can be done to challenge and tackle misogyny. This may explore women's experiences in council and public life, the implementation of menopause awareness and guidance here at the council, how meeting schedules might affect women with caring and or working responsibilities, as well as investigate methods to action plans to improve women's safety, such as the Ask for Angela or Reclaim Blackpool schemes. So I asked the leader whether he would be happy to endorse setting up this misogyny working group, as I strongly believe there is a lot more that can be done when it comes to challenging and tackling misogyny. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stevens. Uh, Councillor Foster. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mayor, and thanks for advance notice to the question, Councillor Stevens. Um, the, this is something I, I basically agree with every point you've just raised there. I absolutely do. And you have my wholehearted support with this, and I'll champion it with you. So, if you recall, a couple of years ago, Council did pass a misogyny motion, and the which wasn't unfortunately supported by all, I recall. Um, however, I do also recall that we wrote to the Home Office regarding this as well, about how the crimes, because it is a crime, are recorded and not recorded in different constabularies up and down the country. And unfortunately, we didn't get a response when I sought um, clarification from officers. So I'm happy to endorse this, uh, Emma. And what I'm going to do in Council is announce that I'm going to ask Councillor Jackie Alty, whose portfolio this falls um, within to bring together a paper to the next meeting of cabinet with the detailed proposals and hopefully you can be very much part of this with some terms of reference to what this working group would look be looking to deliver um, a program and some potential outputs Jackie and um, bring it to cabinet cabinet can endorse it and the working group the working group that you're after okay. will be created at the decision of that cabinet so hopefully within the next six, eight weeks, this will actually be in place. So, good work. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we now have a question from Councillor Will King. Thank you, Chair. Um, firstly, I'd just like to welcome the fact that we've finally got Longton Live reinstated. Um, but can you tell me why it took pressure from borough councillors and the Lancashire Evening Post releasing an article for you to give businesses the reassurance that they've been asking for for the last three months. Yeah, please do take that. Um, thanks, Council King. Unfortunately, it didn't. Um, some count local councillors, I don't know who it was. Um, we have our suspicions, but that's a little bit irrelevant. Um, and if you recall, the actual newspaper article was incorrect because it was saying that they'd been pulled when they hadn't been. If you read the press release, I hope you have read the press release, Councillor King, it's because we're trying on our 50th year to develop something better, something bigger, South Ribble Live. And so you'll have seen in the announcement that Middleford and Penwitham are going to have a bigger live event uh, this summer, which should be um, hopefully championed and supported by all. So I have no idea why the... 
this information broke uh, in the media. As I say, the reports were incorrect. But actually, when we now go and speak to the businesses and the community um, of Penwitham and Longton and Middlefirth, they're, they're chomping at the bit now and can't wait for this event. Thank you. You have a subsequent on the same? Yep. Okay. So I did have a sneaky suspicion that you'd say it was nothing to do with us. Um, so I just thought maybe we run through the, the line of events. Um, we were told in the Western Parishes Hub on our side that Longton Live will 100% be happening after it was our group that originally organised it across, pre across previous years. And we always thought this was happening so, until we started having musicians sharing with us that there was going to be a Bamber Bridge Live and Middlefirth Live on the exact date that now Penwitham Live and Longton Live are now happening. So can you confirm to me whether there was ever plans of having a Bamba Bridge Live and a Middlefirth Live instead? I think you're slightly confused here, Councillor King, because these aren't South Ribble, these are not these are not South Ribble events. These are events that we that we support. These are events that are cre the, the creative network, you've maybe heard of those. These are creative network events. And what this council does, as it does across the entire community, is we are asked to support events and we support the events that these networks put forward. I have had no discussions with anybody about a Bamba Bridge Live at all. But I repeat, these are not salvageable events. We get asked to support hundreds of events all year, and we do. So perhaps you should speak to Creative Network because it's a Creative Network event, not a South Ribble event. No, you've had your subs. No, you've had your. You've had. You no, you're not. Sit down. You are. You are not allowed. You've had your question and your subsequent. Please sit down. Pardon. In which case, you will come in order. Yeah, sit down. Thank you. Uh, press your button again. This is this is not. Unfortunately, the, this show is the Merce show, and it, it's not Councillor King show. So, if you have, and I will be di discussing whether you can have another question with the monitoring officer, and we'll, we'll take an order. But now we have Councillor Colin Sharples. At me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, okay. Whilst uh, Councillor Sharples does look uh, quite similar to me, um, I am pleased to ask my question, which is, believe it or not, Mr. Mayor, um, I've been part of meetings before that have better quality, better questions, and that's when I was, uh, that says more about some of the members opposite maybe, but that was when I was in the UK Youth Parliament. Um, and I think there's some there's some lessons, oh, you'll find out, Councillor Turner, what my question is. <laughs> please, week. please, please, I, I do not want this going any further. We come through me. It's as simple as that. Right, can you now... Ask your Thank question, you, and I will you. say, Councillor Roberts. Thank, Thank you, Mr Mayor. I appreciate the clarification. Unfortunately, last week, uh, the British Youth Council announced that um, it was closing its doors after 75 years, uh, which is a great shame. Um, the youth, you, it managed projects like the UK Youth Parliament, um, and it's a real shame to see these won't be going forward at the minute um, and the government have been really quiet about what the future of them projects are. Um, I just wanted to make a little spe special mention to the Member of Youth Parliament for Kent, Hayden Cutler, um, who has been leading a campaign to hold the government to account on this. But I just wondered, um, given the importance youth, youth councils and young people um, have in terms of running our future country, um, would the leader of the council be willing to recommit his uh, commitment to our youth council in South Ribble? Thanks, uh -huh. Councillor Robertson. I to share your frustration with the, the government's decision. Um, what we're, I'm actually going to give you some good news because we are completely committed to our youth council and actually, we've had representations to actually increase the age range of the youth council that we support here. 
at South Ribble, it's something that we're very much looking to do. Yeah, but you, my absolute commitment, as do the youth of South Ribble, that our youth council will continue and get bigger and better. Thank you. Councillor David Howarth. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I have two questions. Am I allowed to ask them? It really, it should be one and then you go to the bottom of the list because I have had a problem with, not a problem, but a, a procedural It will be uh, quicker if I just ask. Right, OK. Right, the first one, uh, Councillor Foster, um, you've just said that you agreed with everything Councillor Stephen said in her written question. I commend you for taking on board a, a misogyny working group, but would you please be cognizant of the fact that it is not simply a woman's role to be a carer? When I was a member of this council, I was widowed, I had two young children, and I raised those two young children single-handedly. So I would just ask that you take that on board. Uh, my second question is akin to one that Councillor King has asked. Um, all I would ask is because I have a copy of an email that Creative Network sent out to all the volunteers who work on both uh, on the live events, and they it quite specifically said that the live events this year were going to be Bamber Bridge and Middleforth, without any mention of uh, Pemberton or Longton. So all I would ask is if we are working in cooperation with Creative Network, that perhaps we have some discussions with them before next year's events to clarify exactly what is going to happen. And we're not left at the last minute trying to find out whether these events are going ahead or not going ahead. Because when I contacted officers um, quite late on, they didn't actually know. They couldn't give me an answer. And we, we got an answer two or three days later. So I would just ask that we have a bit more consultation, a, a, a bit more communication, and members know exactly what's happening. Thanks, Councillor Howarth. So I concur fully with what you just said. And I can tell Council that um, we've shared similar, um, so, so similar views to Creative Network. We have to be careful, as we say, it's their, it's their events that we love to support, but we have discussed it with the, well, the officers, have discussed this with them over the last week, and hopefully the hiccup, if you want to call it that, Mayor, has been sorted. Now, your, your first question is about, about carers and it, about men caring as well. I completely, wholly concur, and I'm hoping, and I spoke to Councillor Alt, the and um, Councillor Stevens about this, I, I hope there'll be some men that form part of the working group as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Will Adams. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, one of the biggest concerns for residents in Middleforth, Charnock and Lost the Call, is the daily traffic chaos on Leyland Road, uh, which has continued to deteriorate over the last few years. Red residents now are a little confused as to what is happening uh, regarding the only alternative to reduce the traffic on a heavily pop in a heavily populated area. Our MP is saying that the, the A582 will be dueled, yet the County Council are saying that it isn't. Um, residents are angry that the met metaphorical can is being hit down the road. But the only solution to alleviate the complex issues for Middleford, Charnock and Lost Call is to duel the 582. This has been made even more important because of the government decision regarding Pickering's Farm. As a leader of this council, will you meet with residents to listen to their concerns and help that this help this council build a unified position which allows us to challenge the government and the county council decision and support the residents of Middleforth, Charnock and Lostercall. Call. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, thanks for the question, Council Adams. I share utterly share your frustration with the county council's decision to um, not dual. The 582, and just so all members are clear, and I know we have some county councillors in here, the county council cabinet have made a decision that they're going to only do, I can't remember the terminology they use, but they're only going to dual now. Refocus, that's it, uh, Margaret. A very interesting, you isn't it? A refocus, and actually refocus it around their two strategic developments at the cricket ground in Cureden, which I think is bizarre. But you take your own view as why they've decided to duel the bit by their developments and not duel the bit that's actually needed serving the community in Penwitham. That road needs dueling. It desperately needs dueling. And I just find it astonishing 
that literally a week or two after the Secretary of State makes their intervention to overturn the democratic decision of this council in refusing planning permission, which remember the majority of the reasons for this council's planning committee refusing the Pickering's Farm development was because of the lack of capacity on the 582. That was critical, the infrastructure. Lo and behold, the government overturn it. And then literally two or three weeks later, the counter council, conservative control counter council say they're not going to pay to Julie. It, it's just democracy and local government at its worst. Direct in answering to your question of course I'll come and see the community with you about it because I think they need to learn get some honest facts from this council there is I have seen no plan anywhere that shows where the funding for the dueling of the 582 is going to come from all I've seen is the application that LCC have made of a circa 50 55 million pounds I can't remember the exact figure to repurpose the bit between Sainsbury's Cuden and down to the, the railway, the, the West Coast main line. So something's not right here. You know, how can a planning refusal be then overturned undemocratically by the government and then announce that the road's not going to be done? So I think residents need to be armed with facts and I'm happy to share them with the residents as well. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Karen Walton. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I just ask two questions as well. It, one is concerning the last one. Right. So Councillor Foster and our Councillor Adams has said it, it includes um Penwood Middleforth and Lost Call, but it also includes Farrington East, Farrington West and um Longton, New Longton, because in my area it is terrible and it's not that, it's what the implications it has for the minor roads as well for us all who lived in that area, the air quality and everything. So I asked the uh, um, leader if he's going to organise a residence meeting, can those residents be included too? So, uh, do you want me to answer? Have you got another question? Okay, yeah. Uh, it's just another question referring back to the um, minutes of the meeting on page eight. And Councillor Bretherton and, and uh, Councillor Campbell asked for so, um, for some information about flooding and drainage and the car parking issues, I think, at, Bam at Bramber Bridge with the Junior League um, pitches. And uh, you have advised that he would write to both ward councils with a detailed response because Matthew, uh, Councillor Tomlinson wasn't available last week. And uh, as far as I'm aware, you haven't responded yet. So please, would you be would you respond to, to their request? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Councillor Walton. So I'll I'll stand by the point I made at the time on the second question that the um, I'm not responsible for the rain and the flooding, but I get that. But joking aside, the I thought I answered the question um, to to at the, at the council meeting because it was regarding the car parking and the junior football leagues having to postpone games, and I said at the time, if you recall, that it's down to the, the each league has a designated car park, and the problem is that the parents of the, the young kids going to the football aren't using designated car parks, which is creating the problem. However, I know she's not here tonight, but I'll get, I will ensure that Councillor Hunter does write a detailed response to the, to the councillors, and please accept my apologies if that's been missed. Um, I'll make sure you're all copied in. Yeah, the, um, the issue of the, the 582, I completely agree. Um, that this just isn't the the duelling of that area that because it's just an, there's, a, there's a compounded effect everywhere, all the way from the tank roundabout as we all know it, all the way down to Long Meanigate where the test track's been developed now. And again, Councillor Mary Green and I both spoke on Monday at the appeal for the prison, the third prison. Guess what? Guess what? The, one of the fundamental issues is with that appeal, highways, because. The, 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 and this is what I find astonishing. So, if the prison appeal is is allowed, one of the one of the main construction routes for three years from the prison is guess what? Straight through over the bridge into the most congested area of South Ribble. But because the consent, which was refused about three or four years ago, doesn't have to be updated with new traffic management plans, which take into consideration all this brand new development that's, that's that seems to be everywhere at the moment. It is just nonsensical. Pla planning, I have a great frustration, Karen, with planning law. Nothing appears joined up. 
nothing appears democratic and you know fundamentally nothing appears sensible or reasonable and what we may well do and i'll i'll speak to officers and also council adams because he raised the same point it may be that we bring it we, we can we can set up a public debate here and invite anybody that wishes to come to discuss the issues of the 582 and all the issues that we're having lost or call the impact in longton the impact in bamba bridge and the impact in barrington as well so we'll look at doing that and it's something that perhaps the um, we can do with the two hubs could come together and um, we'll create a public meeting and we'll we'll get the people that have the answers the planning officers and the experts here as well and we can answer any queries uh, councillor caleb tomlinson yeah thanks mr mayor i'm just going back to the live events um would the leader agree with me that even though we only assist in the live events we don't manage them we don't put them on would he agree with me that it would be very very difficult to have a live event called the battle of bamby bridge in hutton thank you mr mayor I agree. <laughs> um, right, so uh, earlier on, um, Councillor King, I asked you to, to queue up. Uh, I know your light's off, but this is where you, I believe you would have come in if you want to ask a question. Okay, thank you. I do have Councillor Margaret Smith next, so thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> I was concerned as Chairman of the Hub uh, to hear some weeks ago that there was the possibility that Longton Live would be cancelled. Could I just say that Longton Live has been an event that has been worked in cooperation with creative um, networks for quite some years. And the hub itself, as it is now called, um, has put money into that. We don't get an awful lot in the Western parishes. We get three and a half thousand. Um, and 2,000 of that used to go into sorting out Longton Live. So we did put on events, Longton Live. We were told some while ago that it, we couldn't continue with it as a hub, quite understandable because it has got so big and so popular that it had to go to the events team and the events team would take it over and look after it for us because of road closures and bus uh, being diverted and various things. We have a an email here that comes from Nigel, uh, who is a creative um, network, and it says that it's great news. Longton Live has been reinstated and Bamber Bridge Live has, isn't happening this year. So quite clearly, there was an intention somewhere along the line by somebody, whether it's the events team, Nigel, in cooperation with the two, I don't know because we can't get to the bottom of this, but Longton Live, we now, fortunately, is going ahead. We would like it still to be called Longton Live in conjunction with it, maybe South Liverpool, but it should be Longton Live because that's what everybody knows it as. Um, and I'm glad it's going ahead, but I do uh, hope that it will continue year on year because it just says this year. Thank you. I uh, I repeat, Councillor Mrs Smith, my answer earlier, was this any decision to do with me or my cabinet? No. The venues and the events are all at the behest of Creative Network. They book all the events, they run the events. Was I involved in a, at any time in any discussions about a Bamber Bridge Live as a Bamber Bridge Council? No, it was news to me when I read it myself. Creative networks can go and put events on wherever they choose to put events on. What they then do is they come and ask this council to support them, as you mentioned, with road closures and outside support as we provide for nearly every event, major events, that's held in the borough. So I have absolutely no idea why creative networks were planning to do what they were planning to do or who they spoke to. They didn't speak to me, they didn't speak to my colleagues. What I can tell council happily is that Pen With Them Live is gonna be expanded this year by creative networks, Nigel and the team, and they're gonna include Middleforth Live 
and it's going to be a great, great event in May. And Longton Live is carrying on as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Michael Green. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Well, I, I won't talk uh, about the live events, only to say that I look forward to them and uh, always do attend Pemberton and, and Longton Live events. They are great events and I would encourage all colleagues to do so and to pay testament to the good work that Creative Network does to, to put in us on. But I wanted to talk about the... Um, a582, or should I say the South Hibble uh, Western Distributor, so that's the A582 and the B5253, uh, just to offer some reassurance that the bid that the County Council has submitted, and Council Foster will be aware of this, um, because it's a city deal at the end of the day, so South Hibble, Preston Council and the County Council are all partners. Um, but I understand as part of that bid there will be some improvements to the Pemberton. Can, can we have moved to the question, please? Yeah, We've so got a long... Middle for Fervia, lost a call, and not just Farrington East, as the leader has referred to, but into Farrington West as well. Would the leader agree with me that it is right and proper, uh, and I would encourage him to do so, to actually give the views of this council with regard to uh, the dueling, which I, I understand remains a long-term ambition of the county council to carry out that dueling, but would it be the best time for, for the for this council to actually give their views as part of the consultation which will take place mm -hmm. on any proposed amended scheme moving forwards and i would encourage council foster and all, and all colleagues um in this council to do so at that time thank you mr mayor thank you thanks this this is um and i will answer your your, your question councillor green of course i will but this is where i do have this is where i have ongoing issues about members of cabinets of executives that are making the decisions on these issues, as in Lancashire County Council Cabinet, which you're a member of, then asking loaded and questions of this council that we're making decisions on when we disagree with the decisions that you're taking. And I just, I have for many, many years struggled with the concept of um, elected members being on different councils that are making decisions that impact the other authority, and I know that you've you've declared a non-pecuniary interest on the city deal paper later, but I, I do I do struggle with that because you're part of the cabinet that's making the decision. So you've just asked me a question there, yeah, about a subject that you know far more about, um, Michael, because you're part of the cabinet that made that decision, and you know perhaps you could write to me and give me the justification, the leader of this council as to why Lancashire County Council made that decision not to duel the 582 and why you voted for that at that place when you know the huge detrimental impact that is having on South Ribble. You can't, you, you can't dual-hatted members, particularly when they're executives, can't sit in both camps. It doesn't feel comfortable. And just to put up and to the final point you raised about um, us putting our point forward to LCC as part of the consultation, I can assure all members at every meeting of the City Deal Executive that we have, I make this point. I make this point every single time that the 582 delivery is critical. Ask the leader, ask, ask Councillor Williamson. She knows. She's sick of me saying it, Michael. Right? However, LCC made the decision to repurpose it. That was their decision. That was your decision. You were part of the vote that voted that through Cabinet. And so I do think that there needs to be some clarity here on where you where you actually sit. You, you know, do you want the 582 to be delivered and jeweled in full, like we all do? Do you want the B5253, is it, from the tank roundabout down to Long Meany Gate? Yeah, dueling, as we all do. And if so, we perhaps next time vote against your cabinet colleagues when they vote not to fund it. Thank you. Um, so, uh, no, he is. So, you know, Councillor Green. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Man. Glad that Councillor Foster confirmed that he's part of the City Deal Executive that takes these decisions. And the cabinet at the County Council actually voted to submit a bid for the funding. That was the vote that we voted on. Nothing else, Councillor Foster. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so this is, firstly, I did read the Cabinet paper at LCC and they did definitely say that they're repurposing the 582 and they 
that is what they said and they've designed it as well and they put forward detailed designs just as the council's aware that doesn't include the dueling with the 582 colleagues this is exactly the reason why we put forward earlier the motion for written questions we've been on this now for 40 minutes thank you uh councillor jackie alty and then we have councillor uh, julie uh buttery uh, and then i think we'll move on thank you for allowing me to speak um i didn't give you any warning of this i apologize um it doesn't require much writing down but what i would say is um would you agree with me that the um pothole situation on all of our estates and all of our roads a's b's and otherwise are in such a dreadful state that they are actually not just vehicle damaging but they are a hazard to our health i met with somebody earlier this week uh, a disabled individual who bought an adapted vehicle bicycle and we're all into encouraging people to get on their bikes and the vehicle tipped them forward and they injured themselves. I have driven, as I know everybody has, on the roads of late. I have never seen them so bad. I have never seen, and I can tell you on the road where I live, there is a pothole that I have reported twice that is at least two foot long, at least a foot wide, and at least 10 centimetres deep. And it's been there for weeks. And I'm not the only one. I mean, we have tens of, of those potholes near where I live. You drive anywhere in Leyland, and it's absolutely appalling. Drive anywhere anywhere in the country, I realise this is a national issue and people will shake their heads and think, oh, she's going on about nothing. Actually, we don't deal with it now. So what I'm saying to you, leader, is would you please, and I'm sorry for making work for you, would you please write to Lancashire County Council and say, not only is their negligent approach to the highway situation causing harm to vehicles it's causing harm to people and actually it's damaging our infrastructure for vehicles that are delivering and collecting goods in our area and it's just not good enough yeah thanks uh councillor alty it's the i think that the potholes best typifies the state of this country at the moment it's just an utter mess. As you say, I've got personal issues. <laughs> Yesterday I got I started riding my bike again and I hit a pothole and my my, my pedal pedal fell off and I had to ride the last two miles with one pedal thanks to the pothole. That's a very serious issue. And it and it, it I hit the pothole that hard, it snapped off the, the pedal. The my car has had approximately seventeen hundred and fifty pounds worth of damage after I hit that huge pothole. Uh, in Leyland that was up by Aldi for those that are oh, sorry little it's up by the the, the, Aldi. the Aldi isn't it and it, it was it, it, the pot, I've never seen the roads in such a dire dire strait and of course I will write to LCC's cabinet we need huge investment huge investment and I think this is one of the areas where um devolution needs to work properly because historically the highways were, were managed by the district councils not by the big county council and the problem is Lancashire is huge and the priorities seem particularly odd. I think I think Lancashire County Council's cabinet have approved 10 roads to be resurfaced in South of the over the next 12 months. And I do note, because it's an interesting point you raised, Councillor Alty, because again, I'm going to mention Mark Councillor Green again. So there was a proposal at Lancashire County Council at the, their budget meeting by Councillor Tomlinson to invest an additional £10 million into the potholes in Lancashire because of that bad Unfortunately, Councillor Green voted against it. Thank you. You have named uh, Councillor Green, so I, I do have to give him the right to reply. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Matt. I really didn't intend speaking tonight. That's a bit Councillor Foster. What an on goal. 
Yes, the Conservative administration voted against the Labour amendment proposed by Councillor Thomason to put 10 million extra into our ways. We then, that is correct. But in the budget, which Councillor Thomason and the whole Labour group at County Hall, no doubt supported by our Labour members here, I, I have no doubt, voted against the budget. The budget contained over £50 million pounds worth for highways, including well over £30 million for highways maintenance. So had it been left to Councillor Tomlinson and the Labour group, we would have had £50 million less to spend on highways. So which do you want, £10 million or £50 million? The choice is yours, Councillor Foster. Right, hold on. Shh. Quiet. I am getting very close to striking the gavel. I really am. I'm losing the will. Right, I did promise Councillor Julie Buttery yeah. the last yeah. question. Yes, I know. I am a last. Yeah. 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 Councillor Julie Buttery, thank, thank you. you. I've got to go back to Longton Live, I'm afraid. We have three councillors in Longton and we're all in favour of calling it Longton Live and keeping Penwitham Live the same as well. Everybody in Longton that I know of want it to be Longton Live. They come from Edinburgh, London, everywhere. All my friends from London come down to Longton Live and I can't believe that you're going to call it South Ribble Live. It's a disgrace. That, I've, I've answered and answered. That wasn't and answered. a question. Uh, yeah, it was a statement. And yes. as I said, as I've said, and I'll happily say for about the sixth time, this is a creative networks that we support. Right. Yes, I, I, I know. So, one that wasn't a question; it was a statement. I, I now, unfortunately, uh, Council Green, because you named him. And I'm looking at you. I'm now going to look at you. <laughs> you are, have the right to reply. Please don't name anyone because I, I want to be out of here for midnight. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I will be very careful not to name anyone at all. But even the least numerate uh, of members would realise that an amendment to a budget that includes 50 million that says we want to add. 10 million would result in a budget of 60 million <laughs> which is better surely than 50 million i just on a point of personal clarification mr mayor that's all <laughs> thank goodness we're not coming up to an election right i'm going to move on uh, to questions of cabinet members i'll take these in order so questions for the deputy leader of the cabinet member of neighborhoods and west councillor Aniela belinsky gelder for the Cabinet Member for Finance, Assets and Public Protection, Councillor Matthew Tomlinson. We move on rapidly. Questions for Cabinet Members for Customer Services of Digital, Councillor Colin Sharples, Councillor Caleb Tomlinson. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, would the portfolio holder agree with me after this night's poor show, IT failure yet again, that something sh must be done? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Jarples. Yes, Councillor Thomason, I absolutely agree. I will write to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh there are no other questions there, so we move on to questions for Cabinet Member for Planning, Business Support, Economic Development, Councillor Ian Watkinson, uh, and we've got Councillor Michael Green. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Can I, um, can I welcome Councillor Watkinson to his new role, and I, I wish him every success. He's, got, he's going to be a busy person, no doubt, leading us through the local plan process, etc., but can I also, unfortunately he's not here, but can I pay a testament to his predecessor, Councillor Flannery, for, for some great work that he did uh, in that portfolio. 
the question I'm going to ask is something which I first asked many years ago. In fact, it wasn't to Councillor Flannery, it was to his predecessor, unfortunately, the, the late um, Councillor Bill Evans. And it, and it was about the uh, siting of hot food takeaways in certain locations, particularly close to uh, schools, etc. And, and concerns over that, and that's something I've become more aware of in terms of my cabinet role at the County Council, as Councillor Foster will not doubt allude to. Um, but this is an issue, and we've had a number of planning officers in that time that have come and come to the council, left the council, etc. So I'm just wondering where we're actually up to. I'm not expecting a reply from Councillor Watkinson this evening, but can you feedback on, on where we're up to in terms of tackling that issue moving forward and tightening up on policies to avoid uh, provision of such facilities in the close proximity of young children? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillor Watkinson. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for, thanks for those warm words, uh, Councillor Green, and uh, also for mentioning the, the great work that Councillor Flannery's put in, and also for remembering, we all remember fondly, Councillor Councillor Evans and all his work. I'll definitely look into that, and, and I'll write back to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. No other requests, so we move on to questions to Cabinet Member for Community Wealth Building, Social Justice, Equality and Diversity. Councillor Jackie Alty. We have no questions, so I will move on. Uh, questions for the Cabinet Member for Community. Councillor Clare Hunter, unfortunately, isn't here. Um, so I would ask any questions be put in writing uh, to her, and then she will answer in due course, I am sure. Uh, right, we move on to item 17 now. This is an item for decision. Uh, we're now asked to exclude the press and the public from the following items of business. Councillor Paul Foster, would you like to propose this? Yep, is this seconded? Seconded. Okay, we need to move to the vote. I will take a show of hands on this. All those in favour? All those against? All those abstaining? No, that's clearly carried. Um, we will need to remove everyone and turn the feeds off. I suggest you have no longer than three minutes to sort yourselves out while they do that. <laughs> <laughs> 